or a three-legged plank. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But trying to get my dog to do it on command, it's not working. <laughs> All right, good morning, good morning. Um, welcome to General Yoga Practice. Uh, like I mentioned before, the first and third Thursdays of the month are floor yoga. The second and fourth Thursdays of the month are chair yoga. Can you come on any day you want and just modify for yourself? Yes, you can. Okay, um, may not always uh, be able to give you, you know, to show the modifications. Like I don't have a chair here today uh, because it's floor yoga day, but I can you know, kind of give you some advice. And if you've been taking yoga for me, you have some idea of the chair or the floor, depending on the class. Um, good morning, good morning. Let me start by saying, uh, please check in with how your body's feeling today. Uh, don't do any movements that hurt or feel very uncomfortable. Things change from day to day. Okay, depending on your health or, you know, maybe you've overdone it outside in the garden or maybe you're just feeling a little loggy <coughs> or maybe you have a ton of energy. So whatever it is that you're feeling, you want to go with that in your yoga practice. But we still have to remember to kind of slow down and be in our body. Um, so don't do anything that's painful. Don't do anything that any of your healthcare practitioners have told you not to do. Okay, go at your own pace um, and do what works for you, leaving the rest behind. So we're going to start by that connection. I'm going to mute. Yeah, so if you are, you know, listening to me, uh, you can put yourself on mute. So I don't hear, or we don't all hear the background sounds in the home, which is cool. Okay, so let's start in a seated posture. If you're sitting on the floor, make yourself as comfortable as possible in the chair, same thing goes. But really importantly, we want to sit well. And I love that phrase. One of my favorite teachers in the world, Judith Hanson last year. Um, use that phrase, sit well. And in sitting well, what you want to do is you want to sit towards the front of your sit bone. So instead of this bold pelvis, that this pelvis, we have this like a bowl, instead of it tucking underneath us, we want to lift up to the sides of the waist and the pelvis, we want that feeling that it's almost tilting slightly forward. You can move the flesh of your back end out. You can sit up on blankets or a cushion so that you're sitting towards the front of your sit bones. That's what I mean by sitting well. Do that the best you can. Once you sit to the front of your sit bones, then you can reach up long to the sides of your waist. Can you actually even give yourself a big stretch and then float the hands down wherever you want them to be. Reach up through the tops of the ears so the chin stays parallel and just connect with your breath. You can close your eyes or just look forward on the floor, you know, four feet not really focusing on anything in particular. And just breathe. You can breathe in and out through your nostrils if that's comfortable for you. Some people find that it makes it easier to focus on you inside and on your breath than through just through your nostrils, but it's completely up to you. Just breathing naturally and softly. Then on the next round of breath, when you exhale, I'd like you to drop into your body. So take a nice big inhale. As you exhale, just feel like you're dropping into your body. You're drawing inward. Maybe the body softens just a little. It feels heavy and grounded. Rooted, yet still tall and somewhat alert. And you can do this as often as you need to. At the end of an exhalation, root down or sink down into your body or drop in and once you drop into your body and it softens just a little bit focus on any sensations that you feel in your body so the point is we don't want our thoughts to carry us away we want to stay focused gently and connected to our body and how it feels so if you do get distracted by a thought that's okay just acknowledge it and then come right back to your body Breathing and noticing any sensations you're feeling. Pressure, the parts of your body against the floor or the chair. Maybe you feel a warmth or a coolness upon your skin or in different parts of your body. Maybe you feel a lightness or a heaviness. A tingling sensation or vibration. A 
And then go ahead and shift your awareness to, to the body breathing. And focusing on the inhalations and the exhalations. And you can do this by simply focusing on the beginning of each inhale and the beginning of each exhale, however you want it to be. Just take a general curiosity as you notice the different parts of your body where you feel sensation as you breathe. It might be the belly, the throat, the chest or the back body, and you feel the breathing through the nostrils, sinuses. Some distracted or distracted, and the next exhalation just rocking the body more and more. Settle down. Maybe you can even incur a feeling of relaxation on both the inhale and the exhale. Feeling of letting go, letting your body lose itself. Place your attention on a thought. What is the reason that you are coming to yoga practice today? What is your intention to practice? There's no right or wrong answer. You may not even have an answer. Maybe what is your greater intention? What are your values that you want to put out there? Maybe that lines up in some way with your intention to practice. Maybe you're not sure. Okay. And then you can open your eyes up and activate to what you see around you. Take some nice breath and we'll use uh, movements of the shoulders. Inhale the shoulders up, exhale them back and down. These could be smaller movements or bigger movements. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling the shoulders up. Exhale back and down. Oh, so nice. And simply relax. Relaxing the top of the shoulders. Fingertips out to the side. Inhale, palms reach up. Exhale, palms reach down. Inhale, palms up. Exhale, down. Now we're going to do a little bit of a breathing practice in a moment. So one more like this. Inhale up. And exhale down. So we're going to try to lengthen our inhalations and exhalations a little bit. So we're going to take what they call a three part breath. So as you inhale, the arms go forward, out, and up. That's your inhalation. And your exhalation is press down. Inhaling, inhaling, inhaling. Exhale, press down, gently down. Inhaling, inhaling, inhaling. Exhale, press gently down. Inhaling, inhaling, still inhaling. Exhale, press down. Do a few more at your own pace. The three arm movements are on the inhalation. And then you slow down the exhalation to that four. Inhaling, inhaling, inhaling. Exhale, press down. 
Try not to let this stress you out. If it's too much, then you can just breathe normally. And now we have a drop in the water. It's okay. I'll just do one more. And just sit for a moment, fingertips gently on the floor, and reach it out to the top of the ears. You notice the residual, what you feel from that breath. That breath works. Inhale, right palm up, and reach over gently, exhaling. You don't have to glue your hips down, just to let the pelvis stay heavy and really to gravity. Pull the belly muscles in. You can stay open here and not punch forward. And switch, inhale up, left arm, exhale. Over, really stretching from your hip bone to your rib cage. And again, inhaling, and whew, nice. Breathe, 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 you're doing great. And inhaling and exhaling. Oh, a nice stretch. Ooh. Great job. Very nice and tall. Little we'll shoulders back. We're just going to work on our twist. Um, palms here. Inhale here. Nice and tall. I want you to think as you breathe, especially on the inhalation, that you're lifting your rib cage up a bit away from your hips, but let the shoulders stay relaxed, okay? So it's kind of like a lift from the lower ribs. And the lower ribs draw in and up, okay? So lower ribs draw in and up. Inhale here, exhale, turn. Make sure the hands wherever you're comfortable and stay as tall as you can. And let's switch. Now as we inhale to the front, you want to lift those lower ribs in and up, and exhale to the other side. So we stay lifted both on the inhalation and on the exhalation as we sit. Feeling the action of the belly, especially on the exhalation and the twist. And if you're comfortable with your twist, you can actually take your head and look over your shoulder as well. Just keeping the chin parallel to the ground. Inhale and exhale. One more time each side. Remember keeping the lowest ribs moving in and up so that you're lifted through the middle spine. And back to center. <laughs> awesome job. Awesome job. So what I'd like to do now is bring the fingertips behind the ears to widen the elbows out. And I'd like you to move your skull, move your skull back to in your fingertips. So that your chin is parallel and your neck is in a great position. You're opening up here. And then the opposing movement is to take these palms and press them forward and open up the space between the shoulder blades. So inhaling, we're going to squeeze the shoulder blades more towards each other. And then exhaling, we're going to widen them apart. So we don't need to round the whole spine, not at this point, but we're going to feel the upper back round just a little bit. Inhaling, opening, so you'll arch to the spine. And exhale, separating the shoulder blades. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. And exhale. And release down. Great job. So let's stir the pot. Nice tall spine. Again, the lower ribs draw in and up. Shoulders relax away from the ears. And we're just going to kind of move with the rib cage. So slide the rib cage. You'll see how I do it here. Slide the rib cage and then press the chest forward. Now come to the other side. Now the rib cage is sliding over to the other side. And then move the rib cage back. So move from the rib cage side, front, side, and back. Use your rib cage, make a circle. With the rib cage, you're actually sliding your rib cage from one side to the other. Pretty cool feeling, actually. If you normally don't move in this way. Now we have to go the opposite direction, okay? So we're going to take the rib cage over to the other side, and then forward, and then to the opposite side, and then back. Moving with that rib cage.
moving the ribcage. So move from the ribcage. I know it's, 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 it can be a little bit challenging, and that's okay. Ribcage moves to the side, ribcage and chest press forward, ribcage slides to the other side, and then the ribcage moves back. Gorgeous. And come on back to center. Great job. All right, give us a little bit more opening there in that part of our back that's right where our rib cage, the back of our ribs are. So now what I'd like to do is have you walk your fingertips forward. So you hinge from the hips, and this may be very challenging. If you're in a chair, you can just walk your hands out onto your knees. That's fine. And what I'd like to do is walk the hands over to the right corner, and then let your spine round, round, and slide over to the left corner. And come on. Beautiful. And then let the spine round, take it over to the other corner once again. Lift the chest when you get to the corner. Nice, beautiful. Just kind of easing into the forward bending, okay? Let that belly button draw in. When you fold over and get to the side there, you can let the belly button softly, softly press in towards the inside of the spine. This is a very safe way kind of stretch through that area, the area of your QL, your quadratus lumborum, uh, some of those muscles in the lower back. And then when you get back to the center position, put your fingertips on the floor, on your leg, roll your shoulders back, firm your belly, and lift from your heart. Good. Awesome job. So hopefully you feel a little bit more uh, loose, which I think is a good thing. Um, so what I'd like to do uh, for our final pose work, we're going to be talking about our hips a little bit here, okay? So I definitely want to get our hip and gluteal area opened up just a little bit more. And this can be really challenging if we just do it seated. So I'd like to start with this lying on your back, okay? So we're gonna move onto our back. And if you're seated in a chair, you can just keep sitting. You'll see what we're doing. So come onto your back, gently release down one vertebrae at a time, but you should feel really good through the rib cage and mid back, right? So what we just did, the little bit we just did, hopefully is a nice residual for you. So knees bent, feet on the floor. We're just going to take it nice and easy. You can inhale the arms overhead and exhale, bring your right knee in towards your chest. So if you are seated, inhale your arms overhead. If you're in the chair, inhale your arms overhead, exhale, draw your right knee in towards your chest. <laughs> and then switch. So we're just drawing an alternate knee in towards our chest. That's all. Hands behind the thighs. That's all you're doing. You're just bringing a knee in towards your chest. Inhaling in. I felt pretty logy and crappy this morning. Um, I gave up coffee and I'm trying something a little better for me, a little more natural. And and I was like, oh, I'm not feeling too good. I really should have my coffee. And I went to go have it and it just tasted terrible to me. So, but now as I practice yoga, as I'm practicing a little bit with you all, I'm feeling much better already. So it's kind of crazy. Just what, how far, how long, you know, a little yoga goes a long way. Now, not only do we open the back of our hips in yoga practice, we open the front of our hips as well. So right now we're opening the back of the hips and lower back. So it's pretty easy, right? Beautiful, beautiful. So now let's open the front of the hips. So walk your feet far apart and your knees far apart. So we're just dropping one knee in. So if you were in a chair, you would do a side lunge. So inhale here, exhale, bring both knees over to the left. Feel the big stretch on the front of the right hip and thigh. You can even bring the right arm up overhead if you like the way that feels. It's a nice feeling. This is uh, what called windshield wiper. And then switch. Bring that right arm down. Bring your knees back up. Inhale and exhale. And bring your knees over to the right. So now you're stretching the front of the left hip and thigh. So now we're stretching the front of our hips. We've got this big wide position like an intro wave. And you can go back and forth, knees up and knees over, wide. So you feel that your body rocks, you're rocking across the back of the pelvis, opening up the front of your thigh and hip. And just do that a few more times. And if you like it a whole lot, you can hold it on each side too and get a little bit more from it. Remember, we want to see if we can drop in. So let's, we have our knees and our feet very wide. Let's bring them up and take them over to the left. So our knees and feet are very wide apart. We're 
Got both our knees to the left. Maybe your arms overhead, maybe they're not, or maybe just your right arm is. Take a moment, just hold it right here, and on the next exhalation, drop into your body. Just drop in, feel the body get a little heavier. Feel the body give in the gravity just a little bit more. Keep the toes spreading just a teeny bit. Just let the pose sink in just a bit more. Soften into it. Some yogis will say, let the pose unfold. But I that doesn't speak to me. Because it doesn't feel to me like we're opening up and unfolding. It feels to me like we're softening and deepening. Now let's switch. Inhale the knees up. But it may speak to you. Exhale the knees over to the other side. So now you're stretching the front of the left hip and thigh. You can take the left arm up overhead or just leave it out, whatever works. You know, I just thought about why I might be feeling a little logy today. Yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, and even though we're not Irish, we, I cooked a big vegetarian meal with cabbage and potatoes and, and carrots, so maybe that's why I'm feeling a little logy today. I don't know. See if you can inhale and exhale and drop into the pose. See if you can drop in. Just soften a bit in the pose. Even if you have to change it a little bit, just so you can soften in. Or, if you like the phrase, let the pose unfold. Whatever works for you. So this is opening up the front of the hip. We really want to make sure we open up both the back and the front. And then go ahead and inhale when you're ready. Bring those knees back up. Nice friend. Now we're going to walk the feet in towards each other. Now we're going to bring the right knee in towards our chest and then the left knee. So hold behind your thighs and just bring those knees in towards your chest. This pose is actually called Apanasana or wind relieving pose. So you can release the knees away from your chest by straightening your elbows and on an exhalation, draw them in. If you're seated in the chair, you're going to bring your chest to your thighs and then back up again. So it's just like a full again. Inhale here, exhale. Inhale, release the knees away, exhale, draw them in. One more time, inhale, release the knees away. Exhale, draw them in and then make some circles. Go from side to side across the back of your hips on the floor, make circles. If you're seated in the chair, you could stir the pot some more. Or this. So we can also open the back and front of our hips at the same time, which is an asymmetric movement. So place both feet on the floor. And gently and carefully straighten your legs out. All right. We're just going to bring one knee in while keeping the other leg active on the floor. So hug the leg muscles in towards the bones, flatten the feet a bit, toes face the ceiling. You can inhale the arms overhead or just out to the sides and exhale the right knee in towards the chest. Keep engaging the left leg down into the floor. And then we're going to switch. Inhale up. Now you engage the right leg into the floor and exhale the left knee in towards the chest. So now we're opening the front of one hip and the back of the other. So let's just do this a few times. That's the, the sensation of this particular set of movements is being just as connected to the strength of the leg that stays on the floor as the one that you're bringing in towards the chest. So the minute you straighten the leg on the floor, the muscles are active, you're pressing down. It's as if I were to ask you to do this particular movement standing up. You'd be still balancing on one foot, right? A lot of leg strength there. So we want to keep the leg strength. We want to keep the toes pointing towards the ceiling and the leg that stays on the floor. So a little bit of activity is the muscle hugging towards the chest. Gorgeous. And then release. Okay, so now you can bend both knees, both feet on the floor once again. Bring the right knee in towards your chest and extend it up for the sky. So you're doing a nice stretch. So if you're seated in the chair, you're just going to extend your right leg out, heel down, pose up. You want to stretch in the back of the leg, so however you can feel that. You want to circle your foot, ankle goes in one direction or the other, and you can point and flex. You can your toes, squint your toes, stretch your toes while you have your leg up. So the key to this is to move the leg far enough away from you so you can straighten the knee a little bit more. However you can do that. I have really big thighs, so a lot of times I'll use a strap or a towel across the back of the thigh to hold on to. 
so I can work on straightening my knee joint. You could even bend the knee and then straighten it. You can kind of play with this a little bit, see how the flexibility is in the back of your leg. And then just hold in the lengthened position. So you're pressing toward the ceiling with the heel and the ball of your foot, engaging out, pressing through the heel and the ball of your foot. So you can feel some work in the shin, the stretching in the calf. And you can move the leg further away from your chest if you wish to make it a little straighter. It's completely up to you. Now, here comes the second thing that we can do here. Stretch both legs straight at one time in different directions. So if you're comfortable here, go ahead and extend the left leg on the floor. So you have two straight legs. This can be done standing behind your chair, if you think about it, right? One leg forward, one leg back, both legs straight. So you can definitely mimic this type of two straight legs behind your chair, standing behind your chair, and even hinging forward with your hands on the back of your chair. Gorgeous, nice, big, long stretch. Think about your hips. Does one of them seem higher up towards the armpit than the other? See if you can kind of move this front right thigh bone away from your chest a little bit. Yeah, so the hips are a little bit more even. It may feel, you may feel more intense, intense in this stuff. Great job. And then we're going to bend the knee and place this foot back on the floor. Both knees bent, both feet on the floor. Now we're going to keep on the right side. So with both knees bent, both feet on the floor, I'd like you to widen Widen your right knee, just your right knee out to the side. So it's like butterfly pose, but just what with just one leg. Just one leg. So you know that this stretches through the inner thigh, through the um, groin area. So we still have the left knee bent, left foot on the floor, but we're widening the right knee out to the side. Half a butterfly. Good job. Awesome, y'all. Awesome. Just let it go. Drop in. Take an exhale and drop in. So you can really let this soften. We tend to tense up the back of this leg quite a bit in order to let the center open up. And that's normally how muscles work. But let's use gravity. So take a nice inhale, exhale, really soften everything. Maybe you don't work so hard with this stretch. It's okay if your knee doesn't touch the floor. And then when you're ready, on an exhalation, engage your abdominals and bring that knee back up. Still working on the right side. We're going to bring this right knee in towards our chest. I'm going to take the bottom of the foot towards the ceiling. So this is a squat position. So if you are in a chair, you can take a nice squat, wide squat position, either right in front of your chair with your butt on the seat or not, or behind your chair. So here we are. We're going to work on half of happy baby and half of squat here. So I'm going to take my right hand to the inside of my right leg and just hold on to my somewhere on my shin. And then as I bend my right elbow, I'm gonna widen the right knee out to the right towards my armpit. So this is half of happy baby or a non velocity. Some folks will keep holding on to their, um, their above their ankle. Some can hold their big toe. Some people hold the outer edge of their foot. It's, it's wherever you can get to. Or you can just keep the right hand behind the right thigh. That's completely up to you. But let's think about it. Have you rolled completely over onto the right hip? <laughs> So you can get the hips a little bit more even here. I like to keep the spine nice and long. You don't have to glue the back of your left hip to the floor. Just kind of rock a little bit and just see if you can get the hips more even when you do half of heavy Great job. And the reason I'm doing all the right side is so you can feel the difference when we finish with the right side before we go to the left. Okay? It's really nice when you can notice the residual of the practice, you know, fairly quickly. So we're going to go from this half of happy baby to placing the right foot and ankle over the top of the left thigh for number four position. So what we want to do is this right foot and ankle, the toes are spreading. We want to imagine there's magnets in the right foot and ankle and the left thigh bone. And so you've magnetized your right foot and ankle to the left thigh bone. You can do this sitting in a chair. Just simply put the right foot and, and uh, ankle over the top of your left thigh and sit tall. So these are magnet, you know, magnetized to each other. So they're going to stay together. There's a little activity, a little strength going on there. And you can place the arms out to shoulder height and just simply rock back and forth. If you are seated, don't do this. Just hold the position. Yeah. So we're just going to rock on our hips. Remember, keep that right foot and ankle magnetized to that left thigh bone. Beautiful. 
Now, those of you on the floor have one more option if you desire to, desire to take it. You can inhale the arms overhead, and you can exhale, lifting the left foot off the floor and placing your hands behind the left thigh. Now, do you have to do this? No. If you're seated in a chair, keep the same position with the leg crossed over, but hinge forward, bringing your chest towards your right foot. That's what you can do if you're seated. You will forward bend your torso towards your crossed leg, okay? Gorgeous. So you don't have to do this. You can stay, you know, with the right, the left foot on the floor. This is going to be a more intense hip opener. We still are magnetized. We still have very active right foot as we widen the right knee to the right, whether that left foot is off the floor or not. Good job. Just one more breath. See if you can drop into your body in this pose. Drop in. See if you can soften in. You might notice the right knee widen. You might notice the hips become a little heavier. That one stays nice and long. And then we're going to release this when we're ready. So bring the foot down and uncross. Take a minute now and just kind of lengthen your legs out and notice if you feel any difference on the right side versus the left. You can probably notice it, right? Which is pretty cool. That's a wonderful thing about you. Wonderful, wonderful thing. Okay, so both knees bent, both feet on the floor. Time to do the left side. Inhale here, exhale, bring the left knee in and extend the left leg up towards the ceiling. Circle the toes. You got it. If you are seated, you're bringing the left knee in towards your chest. Beautiful. And then circle the other direction, pulling your flat, towards your toes. And now maybe we move the thigh further away from our chest to straighten the leg. Keep the toes active, press through the heel and the ball of the foot. And you can go back and forth, bend the left knee and then extend the left leg, bend and extend. I have arthritis, so I have to move the joints just enough to keep them lubricated, right? So I want to, you know, not do too much or put too much pressure on, which causes inflammation, but I need to keep them moving. And I remember my, my pop, you know, in his 70s and 80s, every time he got up, he would kind of shake his leg a bit by bending and unbending the knee very carefully. You know, he said, oh, I gotta get him, gotta kick off the rust, he would say, gotta kick off the rust. And then just hold the leg in a lengthened position. And it can be further away from your chest in order to straighten more, and that's okay, completely up to you. Completely up to you, how you do this. But it should feel good. Get a little work going on in the front of the thigh. And if you press to the heel and the ball of the foot, you can feel work in the shin. Right? So it's up to you how far away you put your leg. Notice is one hip up higher than the other. Maybe you can kind of move this left thigh bone forward a little bit and even out the hips. So the left hip isn't, isn't pitching up towards your left armpit. Nice, nice, nice. Great job, doing great. And I'm going to bend this knee and place this foot on the floor. And we're going to do half of butterfly. So you're going to take your left knee and widen it out to the left. So the right knee is still upright, foot on the floor, but the left knee is widened out to the left. Half of butterfly pose or half of Sukhya Bhattasanasana, reclining by the angle. And once again, you may notice if you really like take a moment to just breathe into your body. You might notice that there's tightness developing in the gluteus and in your back end on the left side, in the back of your left hip, and even the outer left hip. Take a nice big breath in. As you exhale, drop in your body. Just let yourself drop in. You can even let gravity help you out here. Let gravity soften you just a little bit. We know when you stretch one muscle, the opposing muscle group lengthens, right? But let's see if we can let gravity help us with this a little bit more than muscular. Okay? And then you're ready. And then exhale, bring that knee back up. Inhale and exhale, both knees in towards your chest just for a minute. Hopefully that feels good. 
Okay, so we're still working on the left side. So put your right foot down, do that. And we're getting ready to work on the left side. So you're going to press the bottom of the left foot up towards the ceiling. You're going to take your left hand to the inside of your left leg and maybe hold your shin and above your ankle and widening the left knee or the left leg to the left as you bend the left elbow, bend the left knee out to the left and out towards the outside of your rib cage on the left. So this is half of happy baby. Be mindful of your right leg. Don't let it widen out. Keep it nice and strong. Knee facing the ceiling. So now we're doing half of happy baby pose. Again, this is a squat. So if you're in the chair, you can just take a squat position. You know, turning the toes out, widening. You can hold on to your big toe. You can hold on to the outer edge of your foot or the back of your thigh here. And have a happy baby is completely up to you. Completely up to you. Take a few breaths here. Hip opening is specific and takes a while, but it's so beneficial. You really feel the difference in walking and telling these stories. And then when we're ready now, we're going to bring this knee more to the center, this left knee. We're going to bend and we're going to place the left foot and ankle over the top of the right thigh, widening the left knee out to the left, nice and strong through that left foot, spread the toes. So you're just kind of widening the left knee to the left and magnetizing that left foot and ankle to the right thigh bone. They're drawn together like strong magnets. And you can put your arms out and you can rock from side to side. Love this one. And then hold. Now we're going to get ready. If you like, if you so desire, and you want to bring the right foot off the floor, inhale, hands up. Exhale, take the right foot off the floor, hands behind the right side. You're still magnetized, still spreading those toes on that left foot and widening the left knee to the left. If you hold the back of the thigh or not, if you're seated in a chair, you're forward bending your chest towards that cross. This is a big stretch, right? So you can relax this. You don't have to keep firm with this right foot right here. You can relax it a little bit. That makes you feel more comfortable. But you definitely need to keep this left foot active, okay? Because we want to make sure that we keep our ankle joint and our knee joint safe while we're opening up any tightness in our hip joint. Because those three joints have to align in very specific ways to be the walk, and climb, and and hands, we want to make sure they stay safe. Walk. See if you can drop into this pose. Take a nice inhalation. As you exhale, drop in. Just add a little bit of ease to that. Drop in, you can do it. Drop in. And then when you're ready, then release. Place it to the floor, lock it off. Ooh, you can kind of feel your hips. Hello. Feel pretty good, I gotta say. All right. So, last hip stretch on our back, I promise. We're gonna come seated for some hip work, and that's why we had to do so much preparation, okay? So, bring both knees in towards your chest, just rock a little bit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just enjoying it, enjoying it. Rock, rock, rock. Rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. And then when you're ready, we're going to do happy baby on both sides. So I'm going to keep my knees bent, bottom of my feet towards the ceiling, and wide my knees apart. Bring the hands to the inside of my ankles or shins, bending the elbows, widening the knees out to the side. So this is happy baby in full expression. Once again, this is a wide squat with a forward bend. So you could definitely take a wide squat standing in front of your chair and place your hands on the seat of the chair as you think. I'm holding on to either my big toes or the back of my thighs, widening my knees out. So happy baby, at full expression of happy baby. So just do happy baby in your full expression. 
love happy baby, don't you? Once you're in happy baby, can you take an inhale and exhale and then drop into your body so you can soften a little bit more? It's okay if you need to put your hands behind your thighs. In happy baby, let's see if we can keep our spine long. That's the important thing about that. Now, if I were in a chair doing this, I would take a nice wide squat with my toes turned out, and I would rest my forearms on top of my thighs, hinging forward. That would be a great way to mimic this in a standing position near your chair. Or if you take a wide squat, put your forearms on the seat of the chair, or on your forearm. Beautiful, nice, happy baby. And let's bring those legs together. Woohoo! Well, okay, I lied. There's one more. <laughs> We're going to do butterfly with our feet off the floor. So, with your knees bent towards your chest, your feet off the floor, bring the soles of your feet together, widen your knees out, and hold on to your ankles, maybe, or your shins. And so you can do butterfly pose in the air. And if this really is uncomfortable for you, then you can put your feet on the floor and do butterfly pose lying down with both legs. So, if you can bring the soles of the feet together, and some folks will use their elbows to press their knees out in butterfly. Please be mindful of that. You can hold on to your ankles and bend your elbows out to the side to help you guide your knees out. But I'm not a fan of pressing on a joint area, you know, with the arms or using the strength of the arms. Um, a yogi once told me, um, do not use your hands and arms as weapons. So no twerking. No big pushing. I know in some sports type fitness, they do a lot of that. And, you know, if you're dealing with younger folks and a lot of ballistic stretching, a lot of really strong movements, it's a whole different ballgame than what we do. And then once you finish with that, woo, bring those legs down. Oh, hello. Notice how you feel. Move a little bit. Wow. Gorgeous. So go ahead and stretch both legs out long, long, long. Reach your arms overhead. If you're in a chair, you're standing tall. Arms overhead. Oh boy, big long stretch. Yes. You want to straighten just a little bit here. Gorgeous. And then you're going to bend the knees. Feet on the floor, wide them apart once again. Give yourself another hip stretch, another um, windshield wiper stretch. Both uh, feet and knees wide over one side and then the other. So just give yourself a little bit more length around the front of the neck. Like I said, you can't just open the back and hit the upper open. And then come on back. Great job. Let's bring those arms down. Now we get to change it so we get to roll over onto our side. Oh, hello. So rolling over onto your side, when you want to come back up to seated, you have to use your belly. So the main muscle used to sit up is your rectus abdominis. It's the prime mover here. And it's one of the only movements in your whole list of movements that you do every day that your abs are the prime mover, the most important one. So pull them in. And then... Draw yourself up using your abs. So important. Okay. All right. So we're going to come, we're going to do some stuff seated and stretch it seated. So if this is challenging for you, grab a blanket or some kind of cushion that you might have and sit up on it and you'll find a little bit easier. So what I'll do is I'll hold the blanket so that there's a corner and I'll point the corner towards the front and then I'll sit my chuckus on it with the corner between my legs so that. And I kind of scooch myself forward so that my thighs are coming on towards the floor. So my focus is actually on the um, on the blanket or cushion if you have a square cushion. Beautiful. So I mentioned we're going to do some more hip stretches, right? So let's do a little bit more open. Let's do a little bit more opening for the chest and shoulders. Okay. So let's roll the shoulders up, down, and back. Open out. Beautiful. Sit up nice and tall. Sit well. You're still sitting to the front of your sit bones, even if you're on a cushion. And just draw the elbows in, inhale out, exhale in. Gorgeous. Inhale out. Feel the shoulder blades coming together, sliding down your back. Inhale out. Now, as you exhale in, you have these elbows in. You can feel your heart lifting now, yeah? Go ahead and take your hands to the back of your hips, fingertips pointing down, and reach the sternum up just a little bit more. So it's a very small back bend. And then come back up to the center, tall position, take the hands and walk them behind you 
or you can hold on to the back of your chair and sit to the edge of your chair if you're in a chair. So I have my arms behind me. My fingers are pointing out to the right and left side. I have my wrist approximately underneath my shoulders. My fingers are spread. Let's roll those shoulders back and lift the heart. You're going to feel your belly button drop forward and down towards or forward and up and then down towards your heels. You notice that? Because you're back bending and you have to back bend at the lower back, which is going to cause movement in the pelvis. Now release this by bending the elbows a little and the belly is going to tuck in. Once again, roll the shoulders, tilt or or, or take the front edge of the bowl of your pelvis and let it drop down and forward towards your feet. And then once again, you're going to bend the elbows a little bit. You're going to feel the belly drop in. And one more time, roll the shoulders back, lift the heart, and feel your pubic bone roll forward and down towards your heels. You can feel this back bend through the lower back as well as the upper back. Pull the belly button in a bit now, halfway, and walk the hands back. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more hip stretching. Okay, so we got a few more to do before we are finished, which is great. Um, I want to do a preparatory on each side before we do the final. Okay, so what we're going to do here is what I call pinwheel. Okay, um, actually, a woman named Lilia Spolin, who used to teach yoga on PBS for years, she, uh, I learned this from her, and I think it's excellent. So even if you're sitting up on height, you can stay there. That's fine. We're going to take both feet out and over to one side. So they make a pinwheel shape. So they make a pinwheel shape. Okay. So this is another stretch along the same lines as the ones we were doing on the floor, right? So it's a big hip opener, very much like pigeon. So if you can do pigeon pose and enjoy pigeon pose, you're going to walk and do that yourself. But I have both these feet in like a pinwheel shape, two 90 degree angles of the knees. The toes are spreading on both. My heart will naturally turn towards the front leg. Okay, I'm going to sit up nice and tall, inhale my arms up, and as I exhale, I'm going to hinge and place the fingertips on the floor out in front of my shoulders just a bit. Now, before I try to lay my chest down, okay, and hinge more, I'm going to work my lower ribs away from my hip bone. So I'm lengthening my rib cage away from my hips, and then I will bend my elbows and gently lower my chest down. Now, if your chest doesn't come all the way down, you can definitely come down on your forearms. If you have blocks or pillows or cushions, you can put those underneath your arms. You do not have to lay your chest on that front leg. It's, you can always put something between the floor and your hands and forearms. But this is the hinge. You'll notice it's, there shouldn't be a lot of punching to the spine. You shouldn't feel a ton of roundness. You may feel a little bit of roundness to the spine. If you want to feel more in this stretch, Press that front shin against the ground just a little. You may feel more in the stretch. Just breathe into the back of that hip. And then when you're ready, on the next exhalation, drop into your body in this position. Just soften in. Still keep the left toes spreading a little bit. Okay? Just drop in. Feel the heaviness in that front thigh and that front hip. Let the back soften as we take it round a little bit. Of course. You're forward bending, so the spine is going to round a bit. We just don't want to drop our head to the floor quicker than the rest of the spine is. You can breathe into the back of your lungs nice and gentle. Each exhalation, dropping in and softening a little more. Then when you're ready, you're going to walk your hands in under your shoulders. You're going to pull your belly button in and up, press into the hands, lift the chest. Um, great job. There's another side. You may notice a big difference in the sides, and that's okay. Again, this is pineal position or, or um, a pigeon, if you'd rather do pigeon, a variation of pigeon, if you're familiar with that. So we have both knees bent, 90 degree angles, both toes are spreading a bit. My chest turns naturally toward my front knee and thigh, but I'm going to Lift up nice and tall, lifting that rib cage up away from my hips, inhaling up, nice long stretch, and then exhaling as I hinge forward and just put the hands on the floor in front of my shoulders. So I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of wiggle my rib cage away from my hips so I can feel my spine lengthen. And then on the next exhalation, I will hinge more and rest my chest down. 
My forearms could be on blocks or blankets or books or whatever you have or a cushion. However, that works. You can stay here with the hands. You don't have to lay the chest on the front leg. It's up to you. Keep both sets of toes spreading a little bit. Because like I said, we don't want to torque at the ankle and knee joint because we're opening up tight hips. It's okay. You just find where you can go in this pose. This is very much uh, close to the same idea as the number four pose, right? But not quite because there's an opening going on in the opposite hip. So definitely go for front of the opposite hip. See if you can drop into this pose on the next inhale and next exhalation. Just drop in. Keep the toes spreading a little bit though, just a little. Dropping down into the heaviness of that front leg and hip and thigh. Breathe into the back of your hip. Breathe into the back of your lungs. Breathe into the whole back body. Find yourself sitting down in this great pose. Beautiful. Then when we're ready, we'll walk those hands in. Roll the shoulders back from the belly, press up. Okay, so what is the final pose? Well, it's half of a very important pose, and, and, and that's okay. So, sitting up on either your blocks or on your blanket, because I definitely want you to sit up on something, okay? And take the legs out long. And we're going to start by crossing this right leg over this left one, okay? So you have... Your left leg out long and I'm crossing my right leg over my left in this way. You can see me this way. Okay, so here comes the harder part. I'm going to ask you to lean a little over to the left, bending the left foot, and then moving this right side of your tuchus back down. So this may bring this upper foot off the floor. Okay, you may notice that you're not quite even. So, you, so what I'll do is I'll kind of rock back and forth until I feel that both my sit bones are kind of even, as even as we're going to get. So some folks can really take this foot way over to their hip, and then this one way over. But that's not everybody. So you do the best that you can here. Okay, I have to be very gentle with my knees, so I'm very careful about this. I want to wiggle my butt so that I can move the left cheek out to the left a little bit more, so that I can sit more evenly on my sit bones. If you're sitting in a chair, you could be cross-legged. You sit up nice and tall, inhale up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Very good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to think about stretching through the sides of the body. So I want you to take both hands behind you, hold on to your thumbs, reach your chest up just a little bit, slide the shoulder blades down. Great job. Just breathing. You're doing great. Hug your inner thighs towards each other when you're sitting in a pose like this. And then inhale the arms up. And exhale both palms to the back of the shoulders and stretch your elbows up towards the sky. So this is modification of Bhumukasana or cow's face pose. So in cow's face pose, it would be, if you're familiar with cow's face and you wanted to do it, you would keep this arm lifted and the other hand comes behind. So it looks like a cow with one ear up and one ear down. <laughs> And you just gently take this arm behind you. You're not going crazy. You don't have to hold our fingers or anything like that. So if you want to try this, you can't. We can stay right here. It's completely up to you. Okay. And then switch. Like either you're both here or maybe you're going to switch and take this one behind you. And you're just taking it gently behind you. You're not going crazy. One elbow points down, one points up. That's it. Easy peasy. Let us be here. And then release. Good. It just feels nice to be at. It doesn't have to get to anywhere. Like a you know, class position. But we need to switch the leg position. So sit back, stretch both legs out nice and easy. Woo, woo, woo. Okay. So now we have to do it the opposite way. We're going to cross the opposite leg over, cross the left leg over. And then when you're ready, sliding the right heel over towards your hip or not. Now you'll notice you're on one hip. 
So I need to pick up and kind of slide my trichosome in and adjust quite a bit so that I feel both sit bones on my blanket or on the floor and I might have to adjust a little bit here. There we go. And it's okay if your foot doesn't touch the floor. I'm not gonna, you know, it's not a big deal. It just depends on where you end up as you kind of fidget with your, your body. So you find a nice comfortable spot, right? Beautiful, sit up nice and tall. And love it. Gorgeous. Exhale out. Very good. Press the hands behind the back so you can open up the front of the chest and shoulders. Great job with the end of class. This is a great job 